My name is Michael Terry Davis and I live in Vancouver. I was born in Vancouver and I've been on the coast since the early 80s, on the water, since the early 80s. Yes, David, my, my first lover, I, uh, we met on Wreck Beach. Um, I was, I think I was just about to turn 20. I think I was like, uh, it was like two weeks before I was turning 20. Um, he was the same age as me and we met on Wreck Beach and, and yeah, so for work, um, I had to come up, I mean, my whole demeanor changed, right? I went from being this kind of sullen, loner kind of person to all of a sudden being very happy and smiley and, and, uh, so, I mean, there had to be a reason, right? So, so at work he was known as Jennifer. Uh, that was what I, I told people that I'd met this person named Jennifer. Uh, because nobody was out. I mean, we're talking, we're talking 1982, and you know, uh, tow boaters and launch guys—they were, you know, sort of one step above longshoremen as far as uh, liberal attitudes. And it, it simply was not discussed. There was no, there was absolutely no way you could possibly even think about coming out. Um, that I never heard anything about gay. No, nothing. That was it. Uh, not even to the point of, you know, deriding it. Like it was just, it was not there. And um, yeah, it never occurred to me to come out there. It was a really, you know, that would have been a very scary thing to do. And then it, the irony was that Jennifer, my first lover, David, needed a job. And I said, well, you could come work as a night dispatcher. And so at one point they had three gay guys working for this little tiny launch firm, but they didn't even, they didn't even know it. There was one guy, uh, his name is Dave, and he was quite a bit older than me. Um, and we ended up being sort of buddies for a while. And he once told me the two worst things on a ship were a thief and a fag. And then we, we sort of became buddies. Uh, he was a really unusual character. He was, he was about, I would say I was in my early twenties and I would say Dave was probably I don't know, 35, maybe 35 to 40. And he, he had a, a junk, like a junk operation and, and a little tug. And, um, but we became kind of chums and we got fairly drunk one night and he started telling me the story about <laughs> he'd been working for a company, which well, I, I will not name. And they were going to him and the owner of the company who was a legend in, in the towboat industry, um, like a, a god. Um, he's been featured in many books. He had a family. I knew his sons who were grown men when I knew them. And anyways, they went to pick up this boat and he took Dave with them. Dave was a young, young man at that time. And when they were coming back, because there was only two of them on this very large tug, they were going to pull into a cove and spend the night at the cove and the whole boat was cold. So the captain said, well, you can sleep in my cabin. And, uh, cause the stove was going in there. And halfway through the night, uh, the, the captain tried to put the make on my friend. And he got very upset and got up and walked out. And I was shocked when he told me this story because, like I say, this, this man was a god in the tobo industry. Uh, my first job out of when I graduated high school, so it was 1982, and I started working for a little uh, freighting company called Nimrod Marine Services. Uh, and my girlfriend at the time, it was her cousin that owned the company. So it was, it, 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 they had two boats, little uh, sea trucks they were called, a little uh, like a ramp at the front and flat bottomed. And they carried oil drums to the, there used to be five uh, oil barges in Vancouver Harbor. So we used to take the oil drums out to that. And we used to run up to McNabb Creek, which was still is actually a logging camp up at the top of Howe Sound and Port Mellon Mill and cabins that were being built and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it was a little freighting, freighting company. It was a very small company and it was actually very uncomfortable working there. There was two other guys working there and they were really, uh, one of them was really, really mean. Um, like so bad that I used to have nightmares about working. I'd go home at night and I'd have these nightmares about, you know, trying to do stuff and he, he was really mean. The other guy who there's a picture of, was was quite charming and, and not bad looking either. <laughs>
So I left there and then I went to work for an outfit called Timac Launch. And Timac Launch uh, services the deep sea ships at anchor, uh, mostly um, people. So bringing in, you know, crew for shore leave, uh, taking out boarding parties with uh, Department of Agriculture and uh, Department of Transportation and Customs and ship chandlers, and you drift around out there for an hour and a half, and then you bring them all back. Um, and we also took the pilots out. Uh, and then, so I started running launches for them, and then I started running a little tug and barge for them, because uh, they also used to take fresh water out to the deep seas. And um, eventually ran a, a packer that they had called the Millbank 4, which was like a hundred foot long fish pack. And the, uh, the union got me onto a Shields Navigation, which was a little, not, not really little, but it was like a, I don't know, they had like five boats maybe. So I went to work for them. And mostly uh, oil barges and running oil up and down the coast. And um, I was a cook, <laughs> I was a cook deckhand. <laughs> and I'd never cooked, you know, professionally for anyone in my life. And I arrived on this thing and not only was I a cook, but it had a, it had an oil stove. <laughs> I was horrified. I had no idea. And uh, yeah, you learned pretty quick. It was a very good experience. Like I, I, I eventually got onto a boat called the uh, the Haida, um Chieftain. It was a deep sea salvage tug. It's 120 feet long, and you know the main deck at the bow was like two or three decks above the water, and then there was two more up to the wheelhouse. It was a big, big boat, and um, we used to get into all these little places because she would tow this 360 foot log barge called the Haida Carrier, which was one of the very first uh, self dumping, self loading log barges. And she was a little freaky because they hadn't quite figured out all of the, you know, the balance and stuff. And so you had to load her just right. They have tipping tanks on one side of them. And so you open a valve and these tanks fill with water and the whole thing kind of leans over and then it's kind of like stepping on a bar of soap. Eventually the logs stay in the same place and the barge just slips out from underneath them. So you got a 360 foot barge leaping sideways, like, I don't know, 90 feet maybe. And uh, it's very dramatic. I loved it because you got to go into all these little, so you know, you got the big outfits like C-SPAN or Kingcom and they're going to big logging operations. We just got the little Jippo guys like, uh, there was this one guy we used to go into, and it was a father and his two sons. Uh, and they'd spent like a year, two years, you know, hand logging a really steep slope. It had taken them two years to put together a boom. And then we'd come in and, you know, pick it all up and be gone in a day. And uh, so it was really interesting work. But I never...